Hello, welcome to this new computer recreations video. So, today we'll have a look at an article by A.K. Dudney published in the Scientific American magazine on May 1984 and we'll see my Python implementation about it. The links to the article are in the video description. The title of the article is In the game called Core War, hostile programs engage in a battle of bits. Two assembler programs try to eliminate each other in the core memory. This writing starts off by summarizing the history of computer viruses and worms starting from the 1960s. It then talks about an implementation of these entities in assembler languages, noting that computer programs written in high-level languages cannot replicate themselves in other areas of a memory like which programs can. The dedicated Wikipedia page has an explanation of the programming language used to code these programs with. It consists of less than 10 instructions, all of them having at most two arguments as input, except for the DAT instruction which has one. Each memory slot can have at most one of these instructions. Slots without an instructions are undefined. Now we'll see my Python implementation of what the author describes in the article with words, tables and pictures. So what I implemented is a kind of simulator. Firstly, they propose to create a circular array of 8000 elements to represent the core memory. My script allows to create a memory of arbitrary length which is implemented like a normal Python list, but extended to be circular. To have a circular list, you need to subclass the list Python type and use a mod operator to address the elements. Another important piece of information in the article is that the simulator needs an instruction pointer to keep track of the execution. The instruction pointer always points to the location of a memory slot. Using the example of the article, the values of the instruction pointer are between 0 and 7999. This implies that when an operation accesses a memory slot, it does so by summing the instruction pointer to the pointed address. Addressing is always relative. The simulator class contains the instruction pointer and core objects, and all the operations we read on the Wikipedia article earlier such as mov, dat, jump, etc. The other methods of this class are used to transform the human mnemonics to machine code and vice versa. Now I'll show you how to transform the human readable mnemonic operations into a machine code. This part wasn't explained in detail in the article, so I came up with a solution myself. I decided to work with strings. In this script, Machine code operations are strings without spaces containing only decimal digits except for the letter F in the dat operation. The machine code string is separated in various components of fixed length. A machine code string always has a fixed length of 15 characters. Starting from the left, we have the first digit which represents the operation ID. So, for example, 0 for dat, 1 for mov, 2 for add, etc. From the second to the eighth digit, we are dealing with the first argument, a. Starting from the left, we have one digit for the type of addressing, another for the sign, and five for the unsigned value. This same structure of seven characters is replicated for the second value, b. The addressing section is interesting. There are three types of addressing, immediate, direct and indirect. Immediate addressing means treating the value as a simple integer and not as a pointer to a memory address. It is represented with the hash character followed by an integer. So, if you say mov hash 1 10, it means put the integer 1 in the address instruction pointer plus 10. Direct addressing, on the other hand, means copy the content of the memory slot pointed by A into B. 
This is like doing array of B equals array of A. Finally, indirect addressing is similar to address arrays this way. Array of B equals array of array of A. The article contains an example of a move indirect operation which I recreated as is right here. The first thing to do is to set up the simulator to have 600 slots and to have the three operations stored in memory. Before running the program, the instruction pointer needs to be set to an appropriate value. In this case, the program starts from the MOV operation which is stored at address 415. To inspect the memory, I created the dump method that iterates through each memory slots and prints the instructions, thanks to the PRN operation. Finally, we can check the expected result with the assert Python instruction. In simple words, what this first program does is to copy the DAT22 instruction from slot 413, 100 slots after the slot number 415, i.e. at slot 515. The second program is called IMP. This one is described in the Wikipedia page as well. All that it does is to copy itself in the next memory slot. This worm-like behavior is achieved through a MOV01 operation, which means copy the content of a current memory slot to the next. In the code, you can see that before and after running the program, there is the call to the dump method to see how the memory is like. Since we have 10 slots in the second simulator, we expect that when running this simulator all the slots in the end will have the imp program. Now I'll show you some important bits of the simulator class. The human mnemonics to machine code method, as the name suggests, transforms the readable strings into strings of 15 characters containing actual instructions read by other methods. Its complementary method is called machine code to human mnemonics and does the opposite. The split machine code method takes as input a machine code and separates it into its various components we discussed earlier. Other methods such as execute operation and store operation are self-explanatory. The run method reads the content of the core memory pointed by the instruction pointer and then calls the execute operation method. You can see, in fact, that run doesn't need any argument. The instructions used by the simulator, such as mob, dat, etc., are implemented as private methods because they are not meant to be executed directly. In fact, the arguments passed to these methods are properly formatted. As you can see, most of these operations are not implemented, but that could be done. The most difficult part was to simulate the right behavior of the MOV operation, but thanks to the existing examples, I was able to do it in the end. Ok, so now I'll execute the script and show you what happens. I'm running it using less, so the output is not cut. Starting from the first program, we have to jump to slot 413, to see if we have DAT22 and the other two instructions near it. If we jump to slot 515, we expect to have a DAT22 inside it. Here it is. The rest of the memory remains undefined. In the second program, before running it, we have the slot 0 with the MOV01 instruction. After the for loop, all the slots have the imp program as expected. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe to learn more about these computer recreations. Bye bye.